and we will get started because we're um, a couple of minutes after the hour anyway. So if anybody else comes in, they can just do that. So to start with, we'll just, uh, I would suggest a sitting, a sitting position to start with because we're just going to bring ourselves into the space that we're in. So um, I might need to just adjust my camera a little bit. Cutting my head off, just like my face. So just, it can be any sitting position for you that is comfortable. Um, so you might like to sit cross-legged, you might like to have your legs out straight. It is important to be comfortable because what we're going to do is a very tiny, short meditation. And when we're trying to meditate, we really don't want our body to be distracting us. We're going to be focusing on our body all throughout the practice. But for this first few minutes, let ju let's just let that go. So making sure you're in a comfortable seat where you can be for a few minutes and just closing down the eyes. Before I go any further, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which I'm practicing today. And today I am once again practicing on the lands of the Mohawk and Haudenosaunagar people. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly. Um, and I would like to pay my respects to them, to their elders, past, present and emerging. And I would also like to pay my respects to their continuing connection to lands, waters and skies. I'd also like to pay my respects to my own ancestors and to thank them for bringing me here to be here with you guys today. And I'd invite you to silently pay your respects to any elders or ancestors that it resonates with you to do so. And then once you've had that thought pass through your mind, am I going to do that? Who am I paying respects to? Just letting any other thoughts that might come in in response be there, just acknowledging them, but letting them go. So noticing that you are thinking because that is what our minds do. And then seeing if you can take that mind to the breath. So noticing firstly that you are breathing and trying to deliberately slow the breath down. It may be helpful to count as you breathe, to breathe in or perhaps a count of four. And as you're doing that, just allowing the whole torso to absorb the breath, feeling the belly and chest, the ribs expand as you breathe in. Once you have that full belly, that count of four, just holding for a moment before you let the breath completely go. And it may be helpful to count out as well and try and see if you can extend that exhalation for a little bit longer than your inhalation. Perhaps you can exhale for a count of six. And I'd invite you to just do that a few more times. Breathing in for a count of four, holding for a moment, and breathing out completely for a count of six or more. And then 
Once you've done that a few times, letting the count go. And as you're breathing in, just saying to yourself, I know that I am breathing in. As you're letting the breath go, I know that I am breathing out. Trying to let that thought be all all consuming. Perhaps other things come in. Just notice them. Perhaps you have some distracting noise like I do. Trying to let the breath and the acknowledgement to yourself that you are breathing be everything. So let's just take three more breaths in this way. Slow and deep. And then we're going to come into our first yin shape for today. And I've chosen one that is going to have completely the opposite effect of that breathing. We're going to really be focusing on our bodies because it's a little bit of a nasty shape. It's not one that I actually really like, but it is one that is really good for us. So we're going to come up kneeling and just starting with your feet flat we're going to take our weight back onto our heels and then we're going to bring the balls of our feet onto the ground so we are really stretching along our feet now this is really uncomfortable for me um, what can make it more pleasant is to put um, some support for yourself under your bottom so between your bottom and your heels. Now, I'm still feeling a really big stretch along my Achilles. So that is where we're going to feel everything along the bottoms of the feet, even the quads, because we're stretching them a bit as well in this position, can, can be noticed as well. So just getting yourself into a place where you're going to be comfortable for a few minutes, but remembering that as I always say, you can completely adjust yourself as you need to be. Now, if this is just too hard for you to, to manage, like it nearly is for me, um, then you can always just take the feet down for a few minutes and then have a few breaths with your feet down and then try to come back up again. So I'm going to set a timer for us for let's just try and do a couple of minutes in this shape because it is really full on. And what I'd invite you to notice is that sense of the stretch. And trying to be aware of it as a stretch, not as pain, knowing that as you're doing this, you are opening up fascia, opening up connective tissue in your feet, in your ankles, in your legs that you probably don't often open. And the benefit of that is that it's going to allow the energy to flow there again. Now you can also, during the hold of the shape, you might want to add more props. 
So it kind of relieves as the level of the weight that you're putting into the balls of your feet. With the feet, sometimes we can, our little toes don't actually get down on the ground. So it can be useful to actually use your fingers and make sure that your toes are on the ground. Just let me share with you this, that this is really uncomfortable for me and I'm trying to just breathe through it. I sometimes find it helpful to send my breath into that area where I'm feeling the stretch, visualizing that I'm sending more energy there. And at any time that you need to just relieve the pressure, remember you can take your weight forward or just lift yourself up. And then see if you can take yourself back into that stretch again. Just taking a last few minutes in this shape, of, not minutes, a last few breaths. Sorry, no, don't worry, I haven't extended the time suddenly. And even in those last few breaths, you just need to relieve the pressure a little bit. Feel free to do them. Okay, so we're going to want to give ourselves a really nice rebound after that and notice the energy flow. So I'd invite you just to at least stretch your legs out in front of you in a seat, but you may want to take yourself all the way down onto the ground. It can be nice to give the legs a little bit of a shake at the knees. And noticing how your feet feel different. Can you feel the energy, the blood, the fluids flowing back into the bottoms of your feet? Once again, just if anybody did miss me saying at the start please do have some music playing for yourself so there is a lot of silence from my end in this practice and today I have some distracting sounds of a boxing workout going on below me Let's take a few more breaths in your relaxed shape. And then we're gonna come back up to a seat and we're going to do a half frog shape. So it's probably easiest for me to face the front of this. And a frog is the shape, the shape we make with our legs. So with a half frog, we are bending our right leg. So foot up um, against your left leg, which is straight out in front of you. And you're bending your right leg. Now, the placement of your foot against your leg can be anywhere along the leg that feels comfortable for you. And then what we're going to do is lean our torso backwards. So you may want to have some support, some cushions behind you. You might not need them. So some people can certainly go all the way to the floor in this shape. You'll see a great example with my mother-in-law, Roz, what she's doing behind her. She's side on, so that gives you a good view there. So you can lean yourself back 
as much or as little as you want. Some people, they might just be on their elbows. So with this shape, we are going to feel the stretch along our adductors, which are our inner thigh, mm -hmm. and also along our hamstrings, which of course goes along the back of the thigh. If anybody has any difficulties with feeling the stretch, then I should have said this with the first one, although I'm sure you didn't feel any difficulties with that stretch, then please just turn your camera on or just pop something into the chat, just write help or something in the chat. And I can do my best to help you. And what you may notice is that the stretch changes through the shape. And that you might want to change your shape whilst you're there to feel more or to feel less of that stretch. You may even want to support your right leg, the bent leg, if that is really tight for you. So you could put something, I've just rolled up a blanket to go under my leg. Adjusting the position of your arms as well can increase or decrease the stretch into your legs because the fascia runs the whole length of your body. So you can, I find if I take my arms above my head, then I'm getting more of a stretch into my inner thigh, my groin. And have your arms in whatever position you like and you might like to play around with them so you can feel the difference just taking a last few breaths in this shape now So that was a bit loud. So I'd invite you now just to probably sit up, straighten that bent leg out, moving really slowly. There's no rush. And just perhaps bend yourself over for a few moments before we move on to the other side. Noticing again, perhaps the difference between the right and the left leg. And the energy flowing into 
the inside and the back of your right leg. And then we're going to come on the other side. So I'm just going to swap myself around so it's easier for you to see. But you'll be this time bringing the left leg up to the inside of the right leg. And it's always useful to be aware that your the sides of your body are often quite different. So you might find that with this side, you need to have the foot positioned on a different level of the leg than you do on the other side. And again, that you might want a different level of support behind you as you lean back. You might want a different position for your arms. But again, I'd really invite you to play around with it. So noticing the stretch into your groin, your inner thigh on the left side, and also potentially into the back of your left leg, your left um, thigh. Remembering to alter your shape at any point during the hold. And just remembering that in yin yoga, we're not aiming to put our body into a position of great stress. We're just aiming to feel the stretch. If you're feeling the stretch, then you're doing in yoga. And the benefit of holding shape is that that's what our fascia needs to be activated, to be stretched. areas are often quite tight because we do sit so much. And bring to just focus on your breath if you find the mind wandering. The use will bring the attention back to your breathing, to sending the breath into the stretch. Just taking your last few breaths in that shape. And then once again, bringing yourself 
gradually, slowly up out of the stretch into a sitting position. And once again, bending forward over your legs. You don't need to have them straight if you want to um, have your legs bent in any shape is good, but just taking the weight of the body forward to balance out that back bend that we've just done. Noticing if maybe your legs feel a bit more the same now than they did with the previous rebound stretch that we did after we'd only done one side. Hopefully there's a bit more balance between both sides now. We're going to do a shape now called sleeping swan, <clears throat> excuse me, which brings us a beautiful stretch into our glutes and the backs of the legs. So you take yourself up into a kneeling position and then bring your left leg in front of your right leg. And the idea is that we gradually ease that right leg back and you'll start to really feel the stretch into your left glute. And then with the weight of the body, this time we're taking it forward. So once again, you can use whatever props you like in front of you. You may not want to take yourself forward very much at all. You may just want to stay fairly upright if you're feeling a really good stretch and you know that perhaps um, for your your knees or whatever it is, it's not going to suit you to go forward. With your um, foot, it can be further away from your body or closer to it, whatever works for you. Um, with your leg behind you as well, you might want to have it more bent, so more of a figure four shape or more straight like what I was demonstrating before. So for me, I do like to take this shape pretty extreme. So don't feel like you have to copy exactly what I'm doing. So remember you can bend that leg. Also adjusting the position of your feet. So um, having the foot flexed or not is going to make a difference to how it feels into your knees and your thighs as well. And remembering to support the front of your body if you do want to take the weight of the body down. And you might not want to. Some people don't need to do that. You can go directly flat down onto your leg or onto the floor. Anybody, once again, is having any problems with that, please let me know. Remember that you don't need to stay still in a shape that's uncomfortable. So please feel free to adjust through the hold. So I just did that myself. I was thinking I'll just go flat down, but then for today, because I haven't been done it, doing all the normal exercise that I would do. So on holidays. I'm much more comfortable having my body supported with some props.
feeling into that, that left glute, how's it feeling? Noticing the difference with your right glute. Taking the last few breaths in this shape now. I do love this stretch. So I'd invite you as a bit of a recovery from that one, perhaps just take your leg out behind you and rest down on your front. And once again, just noticing the difference between the two sides, the one you've stretched and the one that you haven't yet. Can you feel the energy flowing into that stretch side? The fascia has been opened. All the messages that your body wants to send through that area are able to get there. And then we want to definitely even out the sides again. So you guessed it, we're going to do the other side. So this time bringing your right leg in front of the left leg from that kneeling position and stretching your left leg back. Again, remembering you can be in more of a figure four shape, so having that back leg bent. And you can take your body as much or as little forward as you like, supported or not. Just staying completely upright is absolutely fine, as long as you are feeling a stretch into your right glute, then you're doing it. And it can look very different to the shape that I am going to be in in just a moment. And this, just a comment on this as well, might be a bit different to other times in other classes where you've been told you need to have that right hip down on the floor. 
You certainly don't. I am absolutely feeling a big stretch along there. My hip is nowhere near the floor. What you may want to do as well is support that hip. So sometimes we'll use a block. I don't have a block here. But anything that's going to fill in the space between your hip and the floor can then change the sensation of the stretch, make it better for you. But just knowing that it doesn't need to be on the floor. You're feeling the stretch, you're doing it. Remembering as well that you can adjust during the hold. Don't stay somewhere that's really uncomfortable. Where all you can think about is the discomfort. Being where being. Just being, really. But it's an opportunity to be still and quiet. We don't want the noise of terrible discomfort ruining that. Take your last few breaths in this shape. And then once again, gradually removing your supports and taking yourself just down onto the belly again to rest. Do both sides of your backside feel a bit more even now? You might really notice the energy flow into that side with just on the right side. We're going to have a really easy transition into our next shape, which is called Sphinx. So you may just, so this is a back bend. We're feeling uh, a stretch all along the front of the body, but you'll also notice a sensation of stretch probably into your lower back. So this position that I'm in is the most basic Sphinx shape. 
So your arms, your forearms are flat on the floor in front of you. Your legs, you can really do whatever you like with. It's not terribly important. Um, you might want to bend at the knees or you can just have them straight out. You can adjust the width of how close your legs are together or far apart. But what you may want to do is lift yourself up a little bit higher with a prop. So that your more your back is more bent and there's more of a stretch entirely up to you and remembering that you can adjust that as you hold the shape. So if it becomes too much or not enough, because often what happens is the fascia starts to release and you can actually add more height. So often we do this with an actual yoga bolster under our arms, which is a lot higher than what I've got here right now. So I might even add another cushion while I'm holding. Once again, please let me know if you've got any issues feeling that stretch into your back and along the front part of your body. Closing the eyes down can be helpful to allow you to take the focus of the mind inwards. A nice shape to produce tension in the lower back, which is something that many people experience. And a really nice shape as well to reduce discomfort in the belly, the lower belly. Allowing energy to flow really well in the digestive system. For some people in this shape, we can adjust it as well, even into a seal, which is where we have the hands out in front and our arms straight. So if you're you're good and you're feeling the stretch really well, don't don't worry about trying this. But if you want to have a look at the camera and see what I'm doing, and you want to try it, if you want to feel more of the stretch, then feel free to do that for your last minute or so in this shape. Thank you. 
So just taking the last few breaths in watch, whichever version of this shape we've ended up in. Really nice to really try and expand the belly that you've got stretched as you breathe into it. And then just allowing yourself just to rest down on flat on the belly again for a few moments. And I find it nice to maybe gently wriggle the hips from side to side, <clears throat> noticing the warmth, the energy in the lower back, in the front of the body. We won't stay in this resting position long because we're going to come into our last yin shape, which is a child's pose for today, which is really a beautiful rebound from the Sphinx anyway. So with our child's pose, you can have your knees together or you can have them apart. Our child's pose, we take the, the body down forward and with the arms, you can have them stretched out in front of you, which I do like to do if my knees are apart. If you prefer to have your knees together, it can be really nice to take your arms along beside the legs. You may want to have a support under your forehead so that you're not leaning quite so far forward. And with this where going to feel a stretch again along the back but because we're taking our weight forward instead of back we're feeling the stretch the other way so it should be a beautiful um, rebound from what we just did in sphinx you might also find that you feel a bit of a stretch into your inner thighs depending on which position you've put your knees in together or apart And by all means, if you want to feel more of a stretch into the inner thighs, then change the position of your knees during during the hold. So I certainly find more of a stretch with my knees apart into the inner thigh.
on your brain to adjust your shape if you want to feel more or less of the stretch. Your arms above your head, you might also be feeling a stretch along the shoulders, the upper back. Which is another place where we often hold a lot of tension, stress. Take your last few breaths in that shape. And then when you're ready to move, we're going to come into our final resting shape for the practice today. And that can be whatever you want it to be. So traditionally in yoga, we will do a corpse pose, which is a terrible name for a shape, where we're lying on our back with our arms a little bit outside of the body, legs a little bit apart. I love to have a cushion under my knees for my final resting shape. I love to have a cushion under my head. Also a really good idea to pop a blanket over yourself. We're going to, I'm going to just read you a poem and then for the rest of our final relaxation, I'm just going to be completely silent. So it's just a bit of a practice of being silent. So getting yourself into that position where you can truly and deeply relax and experience the benefits of what we've just practiced. And this poem I just really liked for this time of the year, this week of the year when we're in a bit of a no man's land and nobody knows what day it is. It's actually a, I know it as a song that Paul Kelly sings, but when I looked up the lyrics to read it as a poem, I noticed it's written by Casey Benito. It's called Swing Around the Sun. Christmas comes but once a year, and that's a lucky break, for when it comes, it leaves a trail of chaos in its wake. Miles of scrunched up paper, yards of burning skin, an alcoholic vapour round the yellow lidded bin. So when the day is over and your relatives have flown, sink into your sofa with an annotated groan. But come what may on Boxing Day, don't let a second slip. For a grand new year adventure, I know the perfect trip. Let's swing around the sun. Let's head out there on January 1. We'll ride around the circuit. By now you know the way. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's our fondest rondelay. So play a bar from that well-worn repertoire. Let's do another donut round that great big star. We might as well. I think it could be fun. Let's swing around the sun. Every year's a battleground and some you're bound to lose. 
It's hard to turn your fate around when fortune turns the screws. If you come a cropper and you're feeling insecure, it might not seem improper to decline another tour. But put your trust in travel, because I'm here to testify. This zillion tons of gravel is the only way to fly. And I bet someday along the way, your faith will be restored. Come sit beside me on the ride. I'm happy you're on board. Let's swing around the sun. Let's wrap this lap and start another one. And by my calculations, we'll be halfway round in June. Better pack for all occasions. Don't forget, forget to bring the crazy old moon. We'll go so far. Hey, to come back to where we are. It's just another donut round that great big star. Let's clock up one more block before we're done. Make this the greatest spin we've ever spun. Yeah, what the hell? I think it could be fun. Let's swing around the sun.
starting to bring yourself back into your space. Perhaps by noticing your breath. Perhaps by noticing other sounds that are around you. You may like to bring a little bit of movement into your body, perhaps starting with the extremities of the fingers and the toes, bringing that into your wrists, your ankles, perhaps wriggling your legs and arms around a little bit. Seeing if you can pay attention to does your body feel any different now than it did when you started your practice today? And then very, very slowly, perhaps taking yourself onto one side and then gradually very slowly up into a sitting position. Once again, like we did at the start, just a sitting position that's comfortable for you, whether that's legs crossed, legs out, kneeling. And trying to just keeping keep your eyes closed or a very low gaze in front of you. Bring your hands up to your heart, either in a prayer position or perhaps onto your heart. It's taking one moment to notice the heartbeat. Hopefully it's a little bit slower, more deliberate than it was when you started. And just a slight bow to the head to acknowledge yourself, to feel grateful to yourself that you took this time for you. I'm extremely grateful to you all for practicing with me today. And I hope you have a wonderful celebration of the new calendar year this week and please do let me know if there's you've got any comments any shapes you'd like to do in future and have a wonderful wonderful day I'd like to say shanzai which we say in yin yoga to say thank you take care everyone